The purveyors of purgatory and verifiers of veniality. New Very and good. different, so positive and already looking good for you, Andrew. Some years ago, I was principal organist and director of music at a magnificent city church, and on the day in question had been in the building all afternoon practising some Christmas music. Now, for reasons of cost in such a large building, using the several kilowatts of lighting was discouraged except when necessary. But I well knew my way around the place anyway, so could manage quite adequately with a personal torch. Already we're nicely set up, I think. It had been broad daylight when I'd entered some hours earlier and had gradually become darker and darker as I played away at the organ, using just the music desk and the pedalboard lights on the console itself, buried amongst the choir stalls and elaborate historic tombs of the great and the good in the chancel at the East End. The church effectively boasted two large, thundering pipe organs, one sighted with the choir in the chancel, the other in a projecting gallery above the great west doors. Most significantly, for the purposes of this confession, these were configured so that it was possible to play the West End instrument from its own console on the gallery, or anti antiphon <laughs> antiphonally from the console at the opposite the East End amongst the choir stalls. I hope that's clear. Yes, no. crystal. <laughs> Now our church had recently received a major grant from a heritage organisation for a pack of... There aren't that many, but anyway, <laughs> we're keeping it vague. ...for repair and restoration work. And it had been a condition of that grant that said historic building be kept open between 8am uh, and 8pm uh, for visitors to enjoy. With the coming of shorter winter days, this had become a problem in that youths and children were coming in after school to indulge, I have to tell you, in petty acts of mischief and vandalism and on the night in question i had just finished practicing and so switched the organ off at the east end console meaning that at that moment i was in total darkness myself concealed among the tombs and the choir stalls and then i heard the unmistakable echoing creak of the huge west end door lumbering ajar followed by a burst of youthful whispering which was totally undiscernible in the vast acoustic, but which I assumed to be a scouting of whether the coast was clear or not. Clearly, they quickly decided that the coast was indeed clear, as I then recognised the familiar echo, that door creaking further open and the swell of considerable footfall, the crescendo of chatter and something clattering to the floor. There was also now the odd torch beam flashing around, and it had become obvious that there was quite a sizeable gang of teenage youths about to do their worst in my church. There were bumps and thumps of things being thrown about, and it seemed increasingly apparent that they were egging each other on to ever more daring exploits. At this point, I stealthily crept in the pitch darkness back to the chancel organ console, where the blower control switches were located beneath the key bed. It was possible to switch both on without raising my head above the bench level or risk being identified in any torch beams that were by now advancing up the nave. Fortunately, the gang of young vandals were making so much noise of their own they did not observe the organ mechanisms waking up as I selected full organ <laughs> using the appropriate toe piston. Full organ. Full organ. So first I played... <laughs> then I tried... Then I carefully eased one end of the bench backwards to create sufficient space so I could uh, then immediately and effectively prostrate myself across the full width of the pedal keyboard. This resulted in absolutely the most discordant, thunderous and unholy racket that the building had ever witnessed. I didn't have an effect of that. Much of it right above the heads of the most invisible gang still vandalising the West End. For those unfamiliar with the technicalities of classical organs, it is the pedal keyboard which controls the deep, thundering bass sounds which one feels rather than hears. For those who may be more familiar, this large instrument had batteries of honking great reeds capable of parting your hair. <laughs> That's how loud this organ was. Check it out. 
Screams of abject terror erupted from, it seemed, all across the building at once, these being melded and amplified amid the dying reverberations of the organ to hideous, hideous effect. I switched all the blowers back off, returned the bench to its usual position, and quickly exited between the tombs into the adjacent Lady Chapel, in case anybody were to come out seeking and investigating the source of that ground-shaking, thundering voice of God. Amid the continuing panic, screams, terror and confusion, I had no cause to worry about any clattering that I made, and I then laid low in the vestry, I'll tell his reverence, for sufficient time to ensure that I was again alone in the building. It was only when I finally emerged that the degree of panic became obvious. Several bags and satchels had been abandoned and there were various personal possessions left behind. Those responsible for the vandalism were duly identified from their abandoned belongings. Oh, and the church, let me tell you, never had any problems after that. What with it being haunted by the strange organist. However, I do now seek belated forgiveness, Father Simon, not from the vandals who ultimately got their comeuppance, but from those occupants of the tombs who had allegedly been awakened from their eternal slumber, from the Almighty, whose thunder may be nothing like that heard in my building, and from the church council, who may still, some 30 years later, be seeking to play down persistent rumours that their magnificent building is haunted by a thundering demon. I did observe that the area school's carol service just a couple of weeks later was somewhat less well attended than it had been in previous years and I'm afraid I did not come clean at the time. This may have been because a couple of those held responsible for the vandalism tried it on with, some <laughs> <laughs> with a counterclaim that they'd been injured albeit only superficially oh, really? on church premises. But they got nowhere, <laughs> ha ha, says Andrew. The mystery and phantom organist from 30 years ago. Some people will have identified the church, I imagine. But you would have to say this is a fairly delightful comeuppance, really. If you're breaking into a church up to no good and the organist has all those pipes at his disposal, who wouldn't use the thundering tones of full organ? <laughs> what do you say, Sister Bobby? I love this. Have you ever experienced full organ? Anyway, um, okay. what, a, what a beautifully written confession. I have to say, I love the language in this. I really do. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And honking great reads <laughs> will stay with me forever. Yeah. There you go. If you, again, honk, if you've got the facility to use a honking great read, use it. Particularly when it's well... What you got? I wish we had a camera in here sometimes. Bellows um, firing it up. I, I love it. Uh, and Andrew, you're absolutely right. Completely justified. And those souls that may be awakened, I think they'll forgive you as Matt, well. Next it's time beautiful. You, next time you want your hair parted, yes. don't use a brush or a comb. Use a honking great church full organ. Full organ, there yes. Go. We've gone full Dick Emery tonight. Yeah. Well done, everyone. Um, I, there, was a, there was a point here where it seems like he was lying on top of the organ key. What a sight that would have been. Um, I, I think, obviously, we're all we're all going to forgive because of what the kids were in there to do um, and and also do you know what the church always they always love it when they, they when people say that they're haunted because it means m more people are coming in they all love it a bit more footfall everyone's winning out of this apart from the uh, kids who left their stuff and, uh, yes yes very much the, uh, the the bounders of this story so I am definitely going to forgive